I actually did some repacking again and this is the final look. <laughs> this is my look for the day. Got my umbrella. I'm gonna get a water when I get to the airport so that I don't have to carry around that empty bottle because it would have been too heavy. This is it. This is minimalist traveling. Hey guys, it's Kimberly and welcome back to my channel. I make videos on all things lifestyle on a budget and oh my gosh. Delta Airlines nightmare. I have to take you guys through this vlog of my crazy experience flying with Delta recently to get down to Florida for a wedding. It was absolute chaos and not for the reasons that you think. So not because it was a holiday weekend, not because it was like overcrowded or anything like that. That really wasn't the situation. This was all on Delta. So my flight was intended to leave at 3.30 p.m. Comment down below what time you think I actually left. What initially were my plans was to leave the same day as the wedding because Florida is only about a two hour flight and the wedding was in the evening so I was planning on getting there super early in the morning, having the day and then going to the wedding at night. Didn't quite happen like that. A week before I was ready to travel, I got an email from Delta being like, hey, we canceled your flight, but don't worry, we rebooked you and it actually had a connecting flight in Atlanta before continuing down to Florida. I was like, mm, that's a no-go. According to Delta's terms and conditions, when you have a connecting flight, like if that flight is late or there's some sort of delay, like they don't have to hold the next plane. It's not their problem if you do not make it. Delta has more reliability for flights that are non-stop, so just keep that in mind in the future. I mean, if you've got all day and you don't care about delays or anything like that, then you're fine. And yes, it usually is a little bit cheaper if you have a stop, but think about it. If there are delays, you're gonna be in a situation. So instead of doing that flight that Delta had me on, I flew out the day before and I went to a different airport. I was like, I'm giving myself the day before. What could go wrong? You know, I've got this giant buffer just in case, but we hope that nothing happens. So the day of the flight, I'm feeling good. I go to the airport, go through security. I swear it took about 30 seconds, even less than that. I was shocked. I have TSA pre-check and also global entry. So you usually just can zip through the line. But again, it's a holiday weekend. So I got there a little earlier because I just was kind of like, Mm, I don't know how many people are gonna be in line and it really doesn't go that fast if there's a million other people in TSA pre-check. I had about two hours to kill at the airport. It was a smaller terminal, so there wasn't that much going on, but I was like, I don't care. Let me sit down. I went over to the bookstore, saw a book I was interested in, and then decided to rent it out um, through the New York Public Library app. So I got the book for free, basically. I'm just renting it. Um, so I was good. I was like, let me grab a snack. I'll grab something simple because I packed snacks and this is gonna be a quick flight. Um, I'm all good. First thing that happens is about an hour before, I get an email and a text from Delta being like, hey, actually, your flight's gonna leave two and a half hours later and we're also changing the gate. Right off the bat, massive delay. And I'm like, what, already? Nothing going on, very, very calm, chill situation. Delta's like, yeah, you're not gonna fly out right away. So then they move it to six o'clock. Then they're like, this is not gonna be your gate. Your gate's like around the corner. So I was like, okay. And as I was traveling over, I was seeing how people were already like, ooh, this is a big chunk of time. I'm gonna go and try to fly out to Fort Lauderdale or whatever other place. And I thought about that for a second, but I was like, but what if I switch flights and then that one has a delay too? And then I get another update from Delta that's like, yeah, the 6 p.m. flight, we're gonna move you to another terminal. So I'm like, okay, how does one leave a terminal? Do I have to go through security again? Anything like that. So for my flight, I was flying out of JFK and I don't know if this is just how their terminal transfers are, but we were literally on the tarmac. It felt like the most unhinged ride of my life, but the bus was just going through all the planes and just kind of swerving around them and stuff. And there was not like a normal road. There was not like a, hey, this is the street that you need to go on. It was just like, we're going around this plane and then that plane. And I mean, we made it to the next terminal, but I was just like, hmm, should we be over here right now? Like, is it safe to just be hanging around like this? I get to the next terminal. I still have about like an hour or two to kill. As six starts to approach, Delta sends another little message that's like, hold up, you're leaving at 6.45. Now, by this time that there's a group of people that I've seen around because we've just been hanging out and moving around different terminals and everyone's like, why do we keep getting delayed? So the agents at the desk, like, I don't blame them for this at all, but I think the communication between what's really going on and what they tell us is chaos and they need to work on that. So they at one point tell us, oh, 
this plane that's coming up right now that's your plane and as soon as they all get off you guys are gonna get on like don't even worry about it you guys this is your plane they're like yeah woo like i know you guys have been here all day they blame the faa they blamed the weather where we were going to, and then they said something about maintenance. And I was like, okay, so which one is it? Like, which of these issues is the reason for the delay? All of a sudden, we get another update, and they're like, yeah, that's not your plane. That plane uh, needs to back it on up, and our plane needs to come in. Aircraft is on a remote location on JFK. Property. Our plane is at a remote location, but it's here at JFK. Like, what kind of weird language is that? Have it okay from operation that they're working on moving the aircraft. It should begin the movement in about 20 minutes. As soon as it comes to the gate, we can quickly board up. We have our crew members. We're going to have to play. We have our pilots, and we'll be good to go. Once again, once we have all those factors, you can work and get it to all. We do apologize for the it made me wonder if like there's some sort of rule if your plane is not there, if that counts towards something or whatever. At this moment, like I said, I was very calm. I hadn't, there was nothing I could do. I'm a sitting duck. Other people that had to make stuff, I completely understand their frustrations, their stress. Constantly getting like lied to is a little bit frustrating as well. You're like, is this plane gonna take off? Because honestly, there were other options and different flights that other people could have gotten on. Delta's saying like, hey, don't worry. Hey, don't worry. Here's your actual flight time. You're like, well, okay, I'll just sit around and wait. One thing that I didn't want to happen, I did not want the flight to be canceled for the night and for me to have to come back the next day because I was very worried to fly on a Saturday that all those flights are gonna be canceled or pushed back and then I would miss the wedding basically. So at this point, cute little Delta sends a message that's like, hey, I know it's been a while, so we're gonna give you a $15 voucher for food that you can use. And it's a one-time use, so you can't just like buy a couple things here, buy a couple things there. I don't know if Delta knows or realizes that the places that you can buy food at the terminal are extremely expensive. So the $15 was barely gonna cover anything. It could have covered the snacks that I got at the start of the day, because I'm resourceful. It was more like 18, 20, etc. So the $15 voucher is kind of like if you want a beverage. I had already spent by then $40 on food, barely anything. I'm a vegan, there's only so much that I can get. I did get a good amount that I thought was gonna time me over for the two hour flight that I had. I did not get enough for two extra meals that I was gonna need, which was lunch and dinner. So that started to frustrate me where I was like, what does $15 do? It's after eight o'clock. We get another little email that's like, we're doing A15, like, don't you worry. So that plane eventually did back up. It took forever. <laughs> like These planes take forever to move. I know it's obviously some sort of plane logistics thing, but oh my gosh, it took forever. The plane moves by the time we all get back from like going around and getting our little $15 snacks. I stopped believing the text messages that I was getting, which was like A15. No, just kidding. A55. No, just kidding. Eventually there was one that said nine something and I was like, oh my gosh. So I felt bad for my friends on the other end that were supposed to pick me up from the airport because I was like, I have no idea what time I'm getting there. I have, there's no, I have no clue. My only saving grace was seeing the pilots waiting in the gangway for the plane to pull up. I was like, well, if the pilot is there, then there's eventually gonna be a flight. Flight attendants were nowhere to be found. I think they have to hide in safety <laughs> because everyone was really annoyed by this time. I just felt bad. It's like. All these individual situations are so frustrating and just to be held in misinformation or no information at all is absolutely the worst. Communication is key. Like just be straightforward. When we finally were boarding, it was after 10 o'clock. Can you believe that? Like seven hours later, once we sat in the plane, it was like your new takeoff is 10.05. It definitely wasn't. The time that we actually took off, I kept track of it like speeding down the runway ready to take off, 11 p.m. 11 p.m. My 3.30 p.m. flight actually started moving at 11 p.m. That is insanity to me. I am grateful that the flight did take off, but whoa. And the crazy thing was that when the pilot got on to say what the issue was, he's like, you know, they're apologizing. They're like, we're so sorry, we've been waiting as well. You know, there was a whole maintenance issue for the last couple of hours and I was like, um, okay, so there was a maintenance issue for the last couple hours. That was it. There was no FAA thing, there was no weather issue, whatever. 
if they had just said at like 3 30 there's a maintenance issue that's going to take several hours call me crazy but that would be enough information for me to be like oh okay but it doesn't make sense that the maintenance issue went from 3.30 to 6 to 6.45 to 7.45 to 8.05 to 8.55 like there's just that's too too much if that issue is so unstable how are we flying on the plane right now like there's that's just no way ironically the flight was like super easy super quick and we landed at 1.30 in the morning my like genius idea to be ahead of the game blew up in my face thank you delta remember i got there at like 12 something so i was at the airport for 11 hours my flight was late eight hours so that was my chaotic travel during the holiday weekend i don't even blame it on the holiday i don't even blame it on like the extra amounts of people i just blame it on delta and like their misinformation and confusion bottom line delta needs to get it together if you guessed 11 p.m congratulations to you um i hope you feel my pain and um they need to do better with what they offer people when there's a situation now I will say they did follow up the next day with an email saying that they're gonna give us 7,500 bonus miles. I just still don't really think that's enough. I would love a refund or I'd love um, more points or something. But yeah, let me know if you have any crazy stories recently. I know a lot of people have been talking about their security lines. If you can get the TSA pre-check, that is definitely helpful. The global entry, that is very helpful. You just kind of zoom through the line. Both ways going and coming, the TSA pre-check was just quick like that. I know definitely for international that's not always the case because most of those people do have TSA pre-check but anyway let's have a discussion down below. Tell me your worst travel delays. If you have an airline that you'll never fly again comment it down below let me know the story. I'm not at that extreme level yet but it definitely put a damper on the one time I was able to take a little bit of a break and escape the city for a little. You guys know I'm a workaholic so would have loved a little bit more time didn't quite get it and uh, yeah let's have a conversation down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.